Okay, so we move on to the next speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Jean-Sébastien Co. He is full professor of theoretical physics at the University of Amsterdam. He received his PhD in 1998. Help. <laughs> in 1998 uh, uh, in the theoretical condensed matter physics at the University of Oxford. Uh, from 1999 to 2002, he has covered postdoc positions in Vancouver and again in Oxford and eventually settled in Amsterdam in, in 2003 at the Institute of Theoretical Physics, uh, uh, where he became full professor in 2012. He's recipient, among others, of the now VC ER and ERC grants. And uh, since 2016, he has been the founder of SciPost, about which he's going to speak today, which is a known a non-for-profit organization dedicated for, to the developing and implementing and maintaining innovative forms of electronic scientific communication and publishing. Okay, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. I always learn things about myself when other people introduce me like this. I mean, I, um, but uh, it's all very interesting. Um, so, um, Vienna is really starting to feel like a second home to me because, uh, of course, uh, primarily, you know, I've got good friends here and scientific collaborators like Jörg Schmina who do such interesting physics. And really, you know, the research uh, side of it is still primarily what, uh, what I'm after. I'm a scientist. I will remain a scientist. That's what I do full time. What I do in my hobby time is this kind of thing. But the reason why I do this kind of thing is also to help science. It's really completely out of love for science. It's out of a desire to make it better, make it work better, faster, make it more useful for everybody. Um, so what I'm going to do today is really tell you a little bit about SciPost. I have extremely limited time, so we'll see how we do. But uh, the plan is, uh, you know, very simple. Um, I want to introduce the actual initiative. I want to talk about the business of publishing and how we like to reform it. I want to make a few words about Plan S, give you a tiny uh, bit of an outlook at the end, and afterwards in the discussion session, I'll be very happy to answer all your questions. So if you don't already know it, uh, SciPost, what is it? Well, it's quite simply uh, a machine that allows you to do everything that you need to do for scientific publishing, okay? Quite simple. Um, we do everything from preprint handling all the way to metadata curation and metrification and things like that. That's all coming up. Um, who runs it? Very importantly, professional scientists. So it is grassroots, and I insist that it will remain grassroots. Okay. Um, what does it offer? Well, primarily we have scientific journals. Uh, we also have commenting facilities, um, metadata services for ourselves at first, but coming up also for others. And if you want a two-word summary of what it's all about, we leverage openness, the idea of openness, at all levels to improve quality. And quality at, again, all levels, everything that we can access. So what do we aim to achieve? A bit uh, stacked up there. Um, again, that's quite simple. Um, we want a complete reform of publishing at all levels. Uh, everything, even how you write it up, uh, the, the way you phrase the science that you have in there, all the way to how impact assessment is done, how careers are determined depending on how you do it. So we want to implement genuine open access. So these are like uh, strengthenings of the fair open access principles that you might already know. We want to implement a healthier business model for publishing. Um, we want to modernize the refereeing procedure, again, using openness to reward uh, referees a little bit more than now. And we want to reform impact assessment by providing new tools to make a more informed impact assessment than the one that is currently available. Um, if you want to know about the genuine open access principles, just look at my blog. I've got some entries about it. This is also taken from the About page of SciPost. Essentially, the idea is that uh, we do everything in there just for the benefit of science. No profit, no hidden, no hidden agenda, um, copyright to the authors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? You can uh, all look at these things. It's, you know, like it should be. Um, that's the homepage of the, uh, of the site. Essentially, it's a self-coded thing. I guess you don't really see very well uh, these things. But anyway, we have a, a number of interesting papers. I think, uh, uh, oh, that's not the one. Uh, there were just the papers uh, by, oh yeah, uh, this paper by some Austrian researchers was just uh, recently published. Um, one thing which I do want to boast about, because I was quite pleased about this at some point, uh, some uh, metadata scientist from Boulder, Colorado, emailed me and said, look, I'm this metadata guy from Boulder, Colorado, and recently, after looking at the 4,000 publishers who publish uh, things to Crossref, I've extended my studies to include all 8,670 publishers who submit data to Crossref. 
about you know, metadata of publications and things like that. And then uh, what he wrote really pleased me. He said, of these 8,670, um, there's one publisher that does it uh, better than others, and that's Typepost. So we're quite happy because the technicalities of the business of publishing, they are not rocket science. If I compare what is needed for this with what is needed for my research, then I'm sorry, but the research is really an order of magnitude above what's needed for publishing. So it is not rocket science. It is not worth the money we pay for it. Very simple. Okay? So when you hear arguments from publishers that say, oh, but you, know, you wouldn't have any of this without, this is wrong, okay? demonstrably wrong. In fact, I'll be very happy to provide input on their metadata if they need it. Okay. So what do we provide? Journals. Uh, we started publishing in 2016. Um, we have 302 published papers at the moment. A uh, little highlight at the beginning of the year, we published our first issue of Proceedings. So this was a collection of 53 papers in high energy physics, including all the big collaborations that you know about. So we're really trying to expand a little bit. We are currently only busy with physics, however. More on that later. Um, we have a, a, a refereeing protocol which uses openness. So the contents of the reports are publicly accessible. People who are registered contributors, professional academics, can actually participate in the evaluation of the papers before the papers are published. We're strong believers in the capacity of a properly implemented refereeing protocol to improve the published product, and that's why we, we do that. Um, decisions are taken communally by a collection of um, you know, professional academics that form what we call the editorial college. Okay, but I'll be happy to explain that in more detail if you want. Um, the infrastructure behind SciPost is, like I said, self-coded. Um, we have a kind of own private GitHub instance where we hold these things. If you happen to know quite a lot about web programming and you would like to have access to these things, we're open to you joining our team and helping us out. Okay? Not for profit, so don't try to make money off us. Okay? Um, what's the roadmap? The roadmap is that SciPost was coded agnostically from the very beginning. We do plan to expand in scale in physics quite substantially. This is ongoing. We also plan to launch journals in other fields. Okay, so we're looking quite a lot at uh, chemistry, mathematics, computer science. We're also open to other, uh, other areas. And the recipe to start a new journal is quite straightforward. We just need to, salt, uh, uh, to assemble an editorial college composed of really internationally renowned uh, people. And once we have that, we can just open up the floodgates. Okay? So of course, there's a question of the finances and things. So we just have to start talking a little bit maybe about business. Okay? Um, that's possibly one of the things which uh, 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 usually you know, ruffles feathers in discussions with publishers a little bit when I start talking business. First thing they accuse me of is that I'm this raving communist uh, wanting to just uh, really you know, I haven't gotten the, uh, uh, the lessons from history of the 20th century and things like that. And no, 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 rest assured, I love markets. I'm North American, I'm Canadian. Um, I was even trained as a stockbroker. So I have no problem with markets. I see where, where they work. I really understand how they work. But that's the, that's the simple statement. Markets work very well, except when they don't. Okay? Um, so... Uh, uh, in honor of uh, Jonathan Swift's 350th um, birthday, you know, a little while ago, a few months ago, I guess already a year and a half ago, time passes, I published a little blog post in which I propose um, a kind of uh, ultra-capitalist market for scientific publishing. So I invite you to have a look at that because that's a different model that we could go for. But what this demonstrates is that this is probably not what we want. So essentially, if you look at uh, modern economics, I personally view the current publishing system as a prime example of capitalism propped up by socialism. Okay? And I think um, even the kind of capitalist arguments that we can make for the preservation of the current system, they do not hold. Okay? Because uh, we could apply capitalism uniformly across the board, and then maybe I could also have a 36.9% profit margin as the people who use these things. Okay. So how does SciPost go about doing its business? The point is that we try to ascertain the um, impact that we have, the positive impact that we have for the organizations that are impacted by our activities. And these are the uh, funding agencies, the universities, who would otherwise pay the subscription fees or the APCs. SciPost is not in favor of APCs. 
We do not like the gold model. We do not like the idea of author pays. This model was built uh, for the benefit of the corporate publishers who wanted to preserve their streamline. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever for scientists to do everything, and then on top of that, to pay for it. What we believe in is that um, publishing is part of the academic infrastructure, therefore should be funded also by the academic infrastructure. So what's the idea? The idea is that we look at the papers we end up publishing, and then the authors, of course, have affiliations, fund, uh, you know, grants, and things like that. So we know which organizations are related to those, and we just list those. And then we give a baseline amount for the cost that we incur to publish papers. So at the moment, I'm trying to flatten the baseline onto around 400 euros per publication, so an order of magnitude lower than the uh, Ralph Schimmer study talking about 3,800. Okay, so we can really reduce costs quite a lot. So for example, the FWF, that's the list of uh, this year's papers uh, for the FWF, and then you know, they can see how much money they would need to give us to support us. And I'll you know, go back on this. So that's the idea. We just have this consortial model where money is pooled into our, uh, our organization so that we run the whole infrastructure without looking at who we give the services to. Okay? Um, we have a number of sponsors that, uh, 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 that have been uh, you know, found throughout the world, but I want to emphasize how helpful Austria has been from the very beginning. So uh, very, very early on, already in 2016, I had discussions in particular with Falk Reckling and later with many other people in Austria. And actually Austria is the only country at the moment that has a national agreement with SIPOST. So we're extremely grateful for that. It's an agreement over five years. It really helped us have confidence in our business models and also helped others have confidence in our, in our business models. So this is really, I think, the way for the future in here. And hopefully, um, we will save Austria a lot of money with, uh, with this. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, okay, so what about Plan S? Maybe if I have two more minutes or... I have four more minutes. Okay, I'm kind of catching up on time. I started with like uh, minus three minutes for my talk, but it's okay. So what about Plan S then? Well, personally, I'm very much in favor. I mean, in which other walks of life uh, can you think of uh, governments or, you know, uh, uh, leadership institutions actually coming up with a good idea? <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't happen. So I think we have to be very, very sympathetic to that. It's a really, uh, you know, platonically valuable and laudable plan. I'm very much in favor. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I, I, I kind of uh, uh, point to the line between the lines here. It doesn't mean that I'm a total fan of Plan S. It has uh, grave weaknesses, um, uh, but I think these are curable. Okay. So I have points of criticism, mostly in the implementation of Plan S. The canonical global idea is fantastic, but the details, that's where the devil is. Okay, so you can ask, how does SIPOST relate to Plan S? Well, if we look at uh, uh, what's required, essentially, I like to call this like over-compliant, we haven't yet officially received support from Coalition S, although, it must be emphasized, many members of Coalition S have supported us. In point three of Plan S, there is an explicit statement about support for new initiatives, new things, where they are needed. Okay, well, for me, that depends on your vision a little bit. For me, they are needed across the board. Um, so I hope that this thing is going to become more concrete um, in the future. Um, I mean, if, uh, uh, if I could, I would play you this uh, little uh, uh, boasting video of uh, Robert Jan Smith. This was great. I was at a meeting, and then uh, he... Uh, uh, he started uh, singing the praises of SIPOST as a kind of good example for this and trying to say, no, no, it's not uh, like a diamond uh, or platinum. Actually, you need a new word for it. And he said it's going to be rhodium open access. And rhodium, because uh, he had his reasons. You can find the video maybe uh, uh, on the site. Uh, otherwise, I can show you on my computer later on. So the, uh, the audio wasn't working later, but uh, I'll just leave that. Um, Robert John Smith has uh, left his uh, function uh, uh, a little while back. Uh, so somebody else is going to take the helm of this whole thing, and I hope that this is not going to remove the momentum from Plan S. We'll see. Um, so what about the reactions to Plan S that uh, you might have seen coming? So I'm personally really, really, really not a fan of social media. Uh, uh, however, I do look at social media a little bit, in particular, to see what people say about Plan S. 
And then I kind of get the same feeling that, uh, you know, uh, there are problems in there. So um, here I am, to put it diplomatically, partly concerned with the reactions that I've seen. Um, you know, there are genuine concerns. I'm not saying that they don't exist, but there is a lot of incorrect information being propagated. And quite frankly, many of the people doing that are scientists who should know better. Okay? And in the end, it might all end up as a cockfight between scientists. One minute. Okay? So it's an important point here. Okay, and I, I see that uh, you were nodding and things, so I'm kind of happy we can both you know, be torpedoed together by our colleague scientists and things, but I'll, we'll die together. Yeah? Um, so I prefer to think scientists as being immune to fake news and hidden agendas, but this is really not the case. Okay? So I still hope that scientists will moderate their criticism for it, see the positive sides of Plan S, and maybe try to reform it into something which is closer to what they would like. Um, just a little word at the end, it's a little piece I wrote for Europhysics News a little bit, a thought experiment. So I kind of say, hey, let's just agree among scientists that from now on we just stop publishing in the traditional venues, we only explore new venues, we try them out for a couple of years, we assess at the end, and then we go for those. If we did do that, the problem would be completely solved immediately. So why can't we proceed with the open access transition? It's because of the hesitations of scientists. That's really the key to, to it all. Okay, so the end message, that's the point. Yeah, scientists, you're the ones who hold the keys to the future. Irrespective of what your funders say, universities and things like that, they're, they're there to support you. But if you decide otherwise, it will not happen. So with you, if you just do it, open access will inevitably happen. And if you don't do it, then it won't. It's as simple as this. So take your responsibilities. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this inspiring talk. And with this, I introduce our next speaker.